Funny. Okay, I am now feeding two week old African greys by hand. I just mixed the formula. You can ask oh thank you. Just take don't take me, just take the um I just mixed the formula with warm water and I'm making it into like an applesauce, but like a very watery applesauce. And then I stirred it up and the temperature is now lukewarm. It's supposed to be not hot, but lukewarm. I'm going to take a baby out. And this is a beautiful African gray baby, two weeks old. Beautiful baby, two weeks old, and he is really hungry. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up the syringe totally. And when we fill up the syringe, we make sure there's no air in it because air can kill him, air can um, go into his lungs. We would put the syringe on using your right hand and his left mouth, his left side of the mouth and your right hand. And then we would open his mouth and, oh, he's starving. And little by little, don't, put, don't force feed him too much. We would push it very gently. And I'm using a 3cc syringe right now, and he's starving, but I particularly wanted to wait to shoot this video to teach people how to feed um, all parrots, whether they be macaws or African greys or anything, and you just push little by little, and if you see, he's eating, and sometimes it could be a little sloppy, and you just wipe off the excess food, but it's not that bad. So, um, we're going to take another syringe. He likes to eat at this age between two and three cc's of uh, formula. So that means this is a three cc syringe, and we're going to give him between two and three, sometimes four. If he's almost three weeks old, then he will be getting four. And he is eating everything. He is really hungry, this guy. And as he eats, you'll see his crop get big. His crop is, is his chest. And his food doesn't go to his belly. His food goes to his crop. So if you see it extending, don't be alarmed. Um, he's eating like crazy. And this is like the second syringe that, I'm, that I filled up. And he's loving it up. And when you're feeding him, you always have to wipe him. Because he has two little nostrils. If you could see the nostrils, one nostril, one nostril. That's his nose. That's how he breathes. If the food gets clogged in the nose, he can't tell you. And he could die because he won't be able to breathe. So make sure there's no food in the nose. You always wipe him after he eats with a wet, a warm, wet paper towel. And this way there will be no food in, in the little nostrils. His eyes are starting to open. One of them is open already, believe it or not. Now this is the third syringe. Um, you see him eating? He's really hungry, so... I'm going to continue feeding him until, <coughs> really, he don't want any more. You see? It's nice, right? Well, I'll tell you, I did it, but I just did it in the eight-week mode. Oh, you did it? Okay. He, he did it in the eight-week eight mode. He did a two-week mode. I have somebody here that is going to be feeding Hyatt and McCaw babies, and he's watching me, and I wanted him to see this particularly because I wanted him to know how he would feed his babies. And it doesn't matter what breed they are, Hyatt and McCaws are endangered of course and much more expensive than African greys and they're very hard to come by um, but I'm, I just wanted to show him this video solely so he can see firsthand and he did feed you said you fed African greys when they were eight weeks old right is this how you did it yes exactly. exactly oh so you know I'm showing somebody that knows okay I think he's getting a little full. I'm going to try. I know. I'm going to try just a little more. If he doesn't want it. If he doesn't want it, then I'm going to assume. 
I'm going to assume right now that he is pretty he's pretty full. And now I'm going to just, because I don't want to forget about anybody, I'm going to feed his brother and then his sister. Yeah, we didn't have him DNA tested, did you? Yeah, I, d I had him DNA tested. Already? Yeah, I, I took uh, blood from the fingernail. Okay. So I know who's who. Um, it only takes a week to come back, and you can DNA test them if you want to. A lot of people don't care, but... Uh, and thank you, you're a great cameraman. It's coming out really nice. I'm going to put it on YouTube so everyone can see how this works and how to go about doing it. So you put it nice and slow, not too fast. And they're, they're really hungry, actually. I'm glad I did it now because I actually worked this morning, so I did it before I left, which is like 6 in the morning. And now it's a probably about 3 o'clock or 2.30 p.m. and they would do again and then we have to wipe them clean because they're getting this stuff gets very crusty and hard so we have to make sure that we wipe them clean. Now this is the second syringe full and if you see his crop isn't full yet if you could say it's not as big as his brother. By the way there's two boys and a girl in here. Um, and they're all sold. They're sold before they even hatch. They're sold while they're in egg form. Um, people reserve them because African greys are the number one talking bird. They're affordable, um, unlike some of the macaws, which are very expensive. Um, this is going to be my third syringe. And I just want to see the crop get a little bigger because the crop is still... It's getting there. Yeah, it's but getting there, but it's still small, right? Yeah, not as big as the other one. No, it's not. <clears throat> it's definitely not. And he's eating, so you could see he's... I'll try to move my finger out of the way. You could see he's hungry. This guy's hungry. I like when they eat fast. That shows me they're really, really strong and healthy. And, you know, it can be a mess. And then cleaning the, the tank, you just... Wipe everything down, and if you notice, I I, um, I always keep water in the tank for the humidity purposes because they're from a tropical country. Africa is tropical, and it, the humidity in Africa is very humid, to say the least. So I try to you know keep the humidity going and make it a tropical atmosphere. Um, I'm going to try one more syringe, and I just want to make, yep, he's still eating. So if you push too much down his throat, what happens is it goes to his lungs, and there's no way to save him. He'll aspirate, which means liquid will get into his lungs, and we definitely don't want that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just nice and slow. And yes, it can be a bit messy, but once you wipe him up and wash your hands, it's fine. Um, it's really, it's fun. It's fun, and these guys are very, very helpless without <clears throat> a human intervention. Um, they can't eat on their own, and they need the temperature control nice and warm. And I have a very nurturing um, personality so I've taken care of all types of animals even orphans raccoons I've taken care of orphan kittens orphan puppies so you sort of get used to you know taking care and he's I think he's getting full because his beak isn't going a mile a minute he's good yeah he looks like he's good right yes. I try one last time and he doesn't yep he's probably good and at the end, end, I will wipe him down. And you see his crop? It's nice and full. I probably would have wanted it just a little fuller, but he seems okay. And here's the last but not least. Okay. Okay, here's the last one. And he's a boy. And he has a phenomenal, a phenomenal appetite. Um... He really does. This one eats like a banshee. I mean, he really, see that? He really, out of all of them, he just, he's the little piggy. 
I call him a little piggy because he he's flying. He <laughs> is flying. He is flying. Look at those little wings he's got. He loves to eat. And he is adorable. Absolutely adorable. See him bobbing up up and down his head? Okay, here's the second syringe. And that's my African Grey in the background talking. He thinks he's a um, telephone. He thinks he's a robot. <laughs> that's my African Grey in the background talking. And if you talk to them, they'll repeat anything you say, along with some of the macaws as well. Um, it's all about keep talking to them. From a baby, keep talking to them. And he's having a conversation with himself in the background. Do you hear that? That oh my god. See that? I have someone here. Um and he's telling me his African Grey talks three languages, Chinese, Mandarin, and English, which is absolutely amazing and you know it makes me wanna just show him and put him on YouTube because Things that are amazing, I think people should look at and enjoy, because that's definitely three language African Grey is amazing, absolutely, and that's pretty cool. Now this is the third syringe, and he is. When I tell you, he, this guy, out of all of them, they eat, but this guy has this love for food. This this love for food, and he's just going and going and going. And if you can see that, he is going. He really is. And he is really hungry. I think he's going to be huge, and I think he's going to be bigger than the girls. And um, he's going to love his, his food. Now we're working on the fourth syringe. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll see if he, yep, he definitely wants more. Look at that guy go. I'm holding his head up for support. That's what I've been doing um, in all my um, feeding sessions. He's um, eating so fast that he's spitting some up. His crop is really full, if you can see that he's a, yeah. And I think he wants to finish the rest of the syringe, which I'm going to give him that opportunity if he wants it. Yes, he, he definitely wants it. Um, I don't like to deprive them food if they want it. I like to give it to them. Um, you wouldn't want to be deprived of food if you were still hungry. I don't deprive my kids if they're hungry. So um, if he wants it, uh, he gets it. The food, uh, there's no such thing as really overfeeding. If he's hungry, He's hungry. And this is the fifth syringe, if you were counting with me. Right? It's his fifth syringe. And he's still going. He's still going. And I have somebody who's very nice who's actually filming this for me because it was hard to hold it by myself. And um, it's going to make a really cool video on YouTube. And I'm going to send it to a few customers who want to learn how to feed. Always start right hand into the left left mouth like that. Never straight in and never to the left. So I think he's pretty much, uh, hopefully he's done. He should be good. Yeah, he should be good, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll try just a drop more. If he doesn't want it, then we're good. Oh, boy. He's actually still eating. So hopefully this will be the last syringe because he took two more syringes more than his siblings and he's he's still eating he's still do you see this and you're gonna have this with the hyacinths because they're bigger yes. so you're gonna have this and they're gonna want to eat like this you see that Not a problem. Long as here. yes yes so this is really amazing and I I love um feeding the babies. I have no problem with doing it. I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think he's about had enough. So um, at the end, all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
take them out. I'm going to clean up. So I'm just going to put them here for one second because you never really like to put them back in in um, any kind of soil soil bedding. This water is used for humidity. <clears throat> I just close this up and then I'm going to put new bedding down. You can film them and I'll be back in one second. And that's about it. Two temperatures you have on the tank in there. Um, sir? These two units, what are these? Okay, that is um, a humidifier, humidifier to tell how humid it is in. And the temperature. Okay. And the temperature. Okay. Now we just put paper towels in, brand new. And we wipe their beaks with a nice warm paper towel because remember I said I don't want any, any, um, any food to pile up in the nose so we would just wipe them put them back in their clean environment we're wiping them again sometimes they can act like babies that they don't want to be wiped this is the little piggy i call a little piggy look at his little chest he's absolutely amazing um and last but not least the little female who I'm wiping, who needs a who needs a bath, which I'll probably do that later, and that'll be on another video. Um, I just wiped her really good. And she's nice and full and clean. And she goes back. And then I would put the water back, a pot of um, it's just a little cup of water, put it right in the corner. And then I would have a little temperature gauge for humidity. I put that right here. And then I would have my temperature, which I enjoy 85 degrees. I like 85 degrees. It tells you in the books or on Google 85 to 90 if they start having pin feathers. 90 is a little too high. They, they sweat. They pant. I'm not comfortable with 90, but I am comfortable with 85 degrees. So I have it set right now um, for 85 degrees. And I put my lid on. And it's the air that goes in. And then I always watch the temperature to make sure that it is on 85. I'll always take a double look at it because I just don't trust, God forbid, that was misfunctioning and it's too hot or too cold. So um, they're all set for the next at least five, six hours. Um, it's funny because the little boy always stays by himself and, and the others just seem to, um, huddle together, but, uh, they're all done and they're happy and full and, um, thank you for watching the video. Thank you so much and thank you for filming it. Thank you.